Good afternoon, everyone. Oops. Yeah. So most of the disease. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. You can see fine. Great. Okay. Most of the disease associated single nucleotide polymorphism or SNPs identified by GVAS studies have been found to be present in the regions with enhancer features, but uh, we are unable to identify which SNPs actually cause this disease phenotype. And this is because we do not know what the enhancer sequence code is. And uh, identifying the enhancer sequence code will allow us to identify the enhancers in the non-coding genome with the use of sequence alone. And we can predict which uh, GVA SNPs actually have disease phenotype. To address this uh, gap in knowledge, uh, we investigated the enhancer sequence code in embryonic stem cells. We can work with embryonic stem cells because most of the important transcription factors are already known and ChIP-seq data is available for them for both mouse and human embryonic stem cells. Uh, we used the uh, transcription factor binding and modified histone data for both uh, stem cells to identify the conserved sequence determinants of enhancer activity. So uh, based on the previous uh, studies, uh, we know that uh, stem cell enhancers are bound by one of these uh, nine transcription factors. They recruit P300 and they have flanking histone modification, but these individual features alone on their own, uh, we cannot identify which regions have activity and which do not. So uh, we investigated these uh, regions, which are bound by uh, one of these nine transcription factor in mouse embryonic stem cells and using mixture model clustering, we found that there is only this one subset, small subset of regions, uh, which have conserved enhancer features in both mouse and human species. So these in features being the high transcription factor binding and high SGN7 acetylation in both species. So investigating these regions, uh, we identified the transcription factor binding sites or TFBS, which are conserved across six species and compared them to with the regions which did not had cons uh, feature conservation across species. So here uh, using all the uh, Jasper TFBS database and using the motivo to identify the strong consensus conservation, we found that the regions with high uh, uh, conserved enhancer features have on average 12.6 conserved TFBS in them. And this indicates that strong enhancer might be uh, bound by many more transcription factors than previously thought of. And to reduce the output to the most informational ones, so we uh, perform loss of logistic regression to uh, reduce the feature rates to the most informational ones. So this analysis identified the TFBS uh, for the most uh, important regulators in the stem cells, known ones, but also identified the novel uh, transcription factors which are important for embryonic stem cell preferences. So here is the list of the novel ESTFBS which this analysis identified. And to experimentally validate this TFBS, uh, we performed uh, the mutations in the uh, strong uh, natural enhancer. For example, I'm showing here SOX2 enhancer. So this, uh, these enhancers are full of transcription factor binding sites. So I'm share, showing only those TFPS which are conserved across species, uh, which are shown here with the yellow and the blue bars. So mutations uh, of these, uh, these novel transcription factors, which are in the blue color bar, showed significant reduction in the enhancer activity upon their mutation as compared to the wild type enhancer here. Uh, and this enhancer is already bound by seven uh, like known uh, ES uh, transcription factors. So combine that with the six uh, novel transcription factor binding sites, which identified whose mutation uh, led to the reduction enhancer activity, it shows that this enhancer might be bound by 13 transcription factors, which are important for its enhancer activity. And if we mutate uh, two TFBS novel ones, for example, SP1 and TFAP2C, the enhancer activity is totally abolished compared to the wild type. And it shows that even though this uh, enhancer sequence, uh, which had, uh, even if it has 11 TFBS in them, it still does not have any enhancer activity and shows that there is some kind of threshold required for transcription factor binding for the enhancer activity. Now, can we use the learned sequence features to build synthetic enhancer? So it reminds me of a favorite code, what I cannot create, I do not understand. So to test our understanding of the backbone of enhancers, I created some synthetic enhancers. So first synthetic enhancer was created based on the previous model, which is a homotypic model, which shows that like you can 
create synthetic enhancer by having multiple copies of same one transcription factor uh, in the adjacent to each other. So I created this one with the help of the top predictor from our last analysis, which is OCT4 SOX2 TFBS. So this synthetic enhancer was created by 14 copies of OCT4 SOX2 binding site, which were separated by two uh, base pair spacer CC. And, and also created synthetic enhancer, which was based on my model, which says that we need a uh, diverse TFBS from the identified uh, repertoire, which we identify. So here I created synthetic enhancers uh, with 14 diverse TFBS in them. So now let's test the activity of these synthetic enhancer and we will compare the activity of these synthetic enhancer uh, compared to the natural uh, enhancer, which is SOX2 enhancer. So this is the activity of the natural uh, SOX2 enhancer. So the previous uh, synthetic enhancers uh, were uh, created by Cohen Lab using just the four transcription factor binding sites, OP4, SOX2, KLF4, and ESSRB. And they tested uh, greater than 600 sequences using massive power reporter assay, uh, using a different orientation and combinations, all possible combinations of these four TFBS. And this is the activity of the top uh, sequence synthetic sequence, uh, which they found using massive power reporter assay. But if you compare that to the, uh, this SOX2 enhancer, you can see that it has activity which is tenfold lower than the natural SOX2 enhancer. If we look at the activity of the uh, synthetic enhancer based on previous uh, model, which is the uh, homotypic model, which has uh, 14 copies of OCT4 SOX2 binding site, we can see that this synthetic sequence has some increment in activity but still it's nowhere to compare near <clears throat> the activity of the natural enhancer. Now here is the activity of the synthetic enhancer, which I created based on my model, which shows that uh, the diversity of TABS is important above threshold from the identified repertoire. So we can see that all these synthetic enhancer, 14 DTFBS underscore A, B, C, they all have activity <clears throat> robust, which is uh, comparable to the natural uh, SOX2 enhancer. And also, so in this way, we created the first strong stem cell synthetic enhancers. <clears throat> and also, uh, you can see that this uh, underscore B and underscore C synthetic enhancer, they were created uh, by random uh, combination and order of these TFPS. So it shows that the in the code of uh, enhanced activity is flex flexible. So all we need to know is know the specific repertoire for a tissue specific uh, for all kinds of tissues. Lastly, these underscore uh, B and underscore C synthetic enhancer, they did not uh, had any binding site for OP4 and SOX2 binding site. So it shows that also that the master regulators are not required for enhanced activity. Last low, you cannot uh, create any uh, synthetic sequence using the 14 uh, TFBS and uh, think that that will have enhanced activity. So here I create a synthetic enhancer based on the 14 TFBS from the repertoire, which was depleted in the uh, conserved enhancers and it did not have any enhanced activity. <clears throat> so it shows that the identified repertoire is important. Finally, here is the final proof of the uh, TFBS thresholds. So here there is the synthetic enhancer which has high robust enhancer activity. So here I'm systematically removing uh, TFBS from the three prime side of the synthetic sequence. Removal of two TFBS uh, had minimal effect but if you remove two more than only 10 TFBS are left, there is a drastic reduction in the enhancer activity. <clears throat> and after the removal of three more TFBS, then the enhancer activity is totally abolished, even though this has uh, binding sites for uh, the OP4 SOX to all the master TFBS. Finally, if you scan the genome uh, with the which are bound by transcription factors, <clears throat> we can see that the uh, uh, regions with greater than 10 TFBS drive higher hc 7 acetylation level, and also they have higher open chromatin as seen by the DHS. <clears throat> Sorry. So it, can, it shows that the regions with greater than 10 TFBS from the identified repertoire uh, drive uh, higher enhancer features in the endogenous uh, regions as well. So here is the final model that uh, we can learn the sequence uh, features for enhancers based on the conserved enhancers and uh, which led to the creation of the strong stem cell enhancers. 
and there is a repertoire of uh, roughly 70 TFs or 70 TFPS, uh, which modulate enhanced reactivity in stem cells. And there's a requirement of greater than 10 TFPS for strong uh, enhanced reactivity. And also uh, robust uh, diversity is very important for the enhanced reactivity. <clears throat> so here's the summary. Uh, and uh, we can use the synthetic enhancers. They're a great model for understanding the gene regulation, activators and repressors. We can create the novel synthetic enhancers for many tissues like heart, brain, and liver. And the future of a, a synthetic enhancer will be their use in regenerative medicine, can use them for creating synthetic organs with the optimized uh, gene expression. And also we can test the role of SNPs for their diseases using uh, synthetic enhancers. So finally, I want to uh, acknowledge uh, my supervisor, Professor Jennifer Mitchell for uh, great mentoring and uh, supporting me. And also uh, our collaborator, Professor Alan Moses, my uh, committee members, Professor Nick Provard and Tim Hughes, all of them for uh, great input in this project, their ideas and everything. Uh, and I also want to thank the rest of the Mitchell lab for helping and supporting me. Thanks. <laughs>